Hey everybody, what's going on? Listen, if you are brand new to the channel, welcome to Cocktail Albuquerque Treats. We're getting ready to get started. But listen, if you're new, consider hitting that like, that share, and that subscribe button. If you're a returning Wise Council member or Street Committee, you already know what it is. I love you, and I will see you all in this next clip. first start off by saying that I recorded this video earlier when I first got up and everything first happened and I was like you do not want to represent yourself on social media like that get it together okay and so here I am pretty much almost together right now but let me show you all I share with you all today the impartation that God just gave me this morning and the revelation he gave me even in the midst of challenges Hey everybody, what's going on? First and foremost, happy Resurrection Day, okay? Um, a lot of people say Easter. I personally like to acknowledge today as the day that, uh, well, the to signify, because it's actually tomorrow, three days, wouldn't be from Friday to Sunday. But we acknowledge Friday because, I mean Sunday, because people go to church. Um, so happy Resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you all. If you are new, please consider hitting that like, that share, and that subscribe. And if you're returning, you already know what's up. Okay, you're the Wise Council and the Street Committee. All right. I wanted to record this video because <clears throat> I had a revelation this morning <clears throat> that literally just took me out. Smooth out. Now, let me just say this to you all. Um, I've shared on my, on my channel that... Um, this past March the 10th marked 10 years that the Lord transitioned my mother from me. My mother and I were extremely close. And um, if you've never lost a parent, then you really don't understand the lasting impact that it can have in your life. You can still go about your daily life and, and, and do the things and things be relatively okay. But then there are times when you have to just sit in and, and acknowledge that you're just not okay. And for this 10-year death anniversary, I had to sit in the fact that I was just not okay. It's been 10 years. It does not seem like that long, but it has been. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I get challenged with something called disassociation. It's not the personality because there's two different types of disassociation. One type is when you have multiple personalities. The other type is when you just completely just kind of you're like in a in a foggy area just kind of coasting through life i call it being numb and so normally around march i kind of just coast to get through the month and then i come out of it so much so this time i have to be honest that even my finances are jacked up and that is completely not like me so <clears throat> um i've been kind of going through the motion struggling a little bit like desperately trying to get myself back together, back on track. Y'all go help your girl out down below. I've been trying to get back on track, but nothing has seemed to work. And so this morning I was scrolling through Facebook and I ended up coming across this woman named Ashling. I think her name is Ashley Coleman, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if she's a Caucasian lady, but she's a very fair skinned woman if she's African American. And she has the voice of a saint. And she was singing, it was like a two-minute clip of Safe in His Arms, the Vicky Winans song. And <clears throat> I listened to it, and I just, and mind you, it was at two minutes, so it wasn't the full version. So I went to YouTube and just to listen to the full version, because I needed that pick-me-up this morning. I needed to hear the entire song, because I wanted, I felt like that was God's way of telling me that although I'm going through, I'm still safe in His arms, like He's got me. And that's something that I've needed to hear for the last couple of weeks because for whatever reason, I just cannot get it get it back together. Like, normally it's like, okay, you're off track for a minute, you're back on track. I just cannot seem to just focus in and get it back together. So I played the whole version. And in the midst of me playing the entire version of the song, something happened where I, I started to reflect back on where my life was 10 years ago. So let me tell you, when my father died, uh, he died on my, uh, December the 11th, 2012. <clears throat> my mother died on March the 10th, 2014. And 
shortly after my father died, it was Mother's Day. Um, it fast forwards from December to May. And I went with my mom and her sisters to church and then they did a brunch. It was really a nice day. <clears throat> and mind you, I was living in the D.C. area at one point. When my father died, I came back full time. Um, I was living with one of my friends, one of my platonic friends. So fast forward, <clears throat> I get back home. I'm staying with my mom again because I want to make sure that she's good. And I remember coming back home. This was May of 2013. And I, 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 you know, it's so funny because my father, like when you open up the door, he was always in the kitchen. He loved, my father loved to cook, right? He worked hard, but he just loved to just decompress and watch the cooking channel at night, the cooking network or whatever they call it. And he would just cook. And so he was always in the kitchen. I mean, when I say always in the kitchen, so I would walk in the door and I would see when he was alive and I would see his footsteps at the, at the foot of the, you know, at the bottom of the stairs and in the kitchen. And this particular Mother's Day, I walked in the house, <clears throat> mind you, just left my mom, knowing that my father's gone. But I had this feeling like I really want to just see if he's going to be there. Because although I knew that he was gone, I still I was still in a little bit of denial. And so I, I cracked open the door and there was no feet at the bottom of the stairs and in the kitchen. And I remember going to my bedroom, plopping down on the bed, <clears throat> And thinking to myself, what is going to happen to me? Keep in mind, I was a spoiled brat. So I did not really know how to do life without my father. And so anyway, I, I just kept saying, like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? <clears throat> Let's fast forward now to March of 2014. My mother dies. Keep in mind, I have been looking for another job for several years, unbeknownst to my pastor, <laughs> by, by uh, the nonprofit I was working for. And my mom dies, and then my pastor comes to my mom's funeral, and he goes home, and he passes away. And I was ready at that point, by, Ju by June and July, I was ready for a change. I was just like, Lord, something has to happen. I got to just, I got to get to the next level, but I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I don't. I don't know how to do this thing. You know, I had never been by myself when I lived in DC. I was living with one of my friends. So I didn't know how to do life like alone, right? I came into the world with a twin sister. My my father was like, you know, father of the century when it came down to providing and protecting. I didn't know how to do this thing called life. And so by June of 2014, again, lost my mom, lost my pastor. <clears throat> I get a call about a job. Finally, I got the job. I was offered the position, but I didn't start until September. And, but I, again, I, I did not know how to do life. So much so that by July of 2014, <clears throat> against my, be well, it was with my better judgment because they looked out for me. My aunt and my uncle said, move in with us. You know, you could just have the, the full basement to yourself, basement apartment, do your thing, you grown, whatever. We ain't gonna bother you, okay? We might want you to come and hang out with us a little bit, which I did. But we're not going to bother you, you know? And so I moved in with my aunt and my uncle. That was in July of 20, 2014. And I still did not have any major focus. But in the midst of it, I didn't realize that God was just working everything out. Because I didn't know where to turn, what to do, nothing. <clears throat> By, I want to say it was the end of February, early March... So at the end of February, I, I found my own apartment. And now keep in mind, I didn't do it by myself because my now my now fiance is with me. So I didn't shack up. I don't believe in shacking up. But he was with me the entire process of getting my apartment. And so I was still not alone. I still didn't know how to do it on my own. I didn't have that, you know what I mean? I had to have a crutch type, type of situation. So I move in. And everything is fine. And then, boom. March the 9th. Keep, keep a track of the dates. March the 9th, 2018. <clears throat> I find out that he is doing the unthinkable. And I've talked about my indiscretions as well on this channel. I wasn't innocent either. But, I, you know, but it, it is what it is. So, we're talking. And he explains everything. We break up. 
And I remained in that same apartment f until about 2022 by myself. God worked it out. Even though there were times when I was facing eviction, God worked it out. There was one time I was facing eviction and I even recorded a video for YouTube and I was like, I don't know where I'm going to be in the next couple of months, but hopefully I'm in a, in a better place. Never posted a video, but I recorded it because I wanted to make sure I had it on record that how I was feeling in the moment. <clears throat> then I moved here and all was well. You know, still facing some challenges, still trying to do life, but finding this newfound passion of going back. You know, I, I love going live on Periscope, so I'm going live here on YouTube. And then when I, it was like, what, last March of 2023, I think that I started to see a shift in myself, even with my recording. Like, I just didn't have the wherewithal because, again, it's March is a really difficult month. So I just didn't have it in me. And it kind of trickled into April and then May, but you all didn't know much about it. I just told you, hey, I'm going through because it's my mother's death anniversary, but I'm going to be back on track. I try myself to get back to a certain place emotionally and mentally, but I just couldn't do it until probably about June-ish. So <clears throat> this past March marked 10 years of my mother being gone. And you all know I'm a huge advocate of mental health therapy or I, I live by therapy I swear by it not Christian counseling therapy so um this past March marked 10 years this year was a little bit different <clears throat> this year I I grieved but I didn't realize I didn't realize how much I was grieving. I was just going to a whole nother level with it. Like I just had no energy, felt very lethargic. And to the point where I was paying bills off and not looking, cause I like to keep a track of my accounts. And it got to the point where I, and then vendors didn't pay on time, still haven't paid on time. But in the midst of it, I was just like coasting. So it's towards the end of the month where I come out of the fog and I'm starting to feel more like myself. And so I, I'm coming to last week and I'm looking at my bank account and I'm like, okay, these people have to pay me my money. You know what I mean? And I believe in manifestation. If you're a Christian, you should believe in manifestation as well because you say manifest your love and people, you need to believe in manifestation. It's a big part of the Bible. And so... um so I believe heavily in manifestation and, and feeling good and positive and law of attraction type of stuff. And I'm trying to get the feeling of feeling good, but it's like that, that depression and things just kept coming in and toting. And I just was like, you know what, Lord, I can't, I, I don't know what to do. And I literally was just like, God, like, I need you to move. I need you to be the, 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 uh, president of my board. I need you to be at all these things in my life. Like I'm desperate. And it just seemed like every time I would ask or every time I would pray, nothing would happen. <clears throat> Until this morning. This morning, <clears throat> but with that song, Safe in His Arms, God had to remind me of every single time that he came through in my life. Even to the point of where I was 10 years ago with my credit, Keep in mind, when I moved here, my credit was not the best. And I worked on building it back up. God gave me the wherewithal. He, you know, he put the proper people on YouTube to share some information. And then I bought a book. And then I started to fix my own credit through the book. It was amazing. <clears throat> so even to where I was 10 years ago, credit-wise, was not is not where I am today. Because, mind you, my bank account is, 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 is looking at me sideways. <clears throat> That is how that is how much I have in my account. Literally, he, they're looking at it like, girl, what are we going to do type of situation. <clears throat> and my saving grace, and some people might say, this is just a testimony. My saving grace to myself was, I have X amount of dollars on my credit card. I will get the necessities and worry about everything later. Worry about everything else later. Um, there's a part in the song where it says because the Lord is my shepherd that I have everything that I need 
because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need, not the things that I want, not the things that I'm envisioning and craving for, because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. And it broke, y'all, that thing broke me down because I just was like, Lord, despite what I'm going through financially, despite what I'm going through emotionally about the death of my mother, despite the fact of feeling like I want to quit YouTube tomorrow. Can I, let me just be honest with y'all. Despite the fact that I am struggling on continuing this YouTube journey, I have everything that I need. There is not one thing that I need that I do not have. And I'm just, I listen, that thing broke me down. Whew. It was probably the most refreshing cry that I have had in a very long time. Because again, despite the fact of the storm being so great right now, despite the fact that I was in a fog for almost three weeks, despite the fact that I've had to close my inner circle, I've even had to disband myself from people that I thought were close to me because of this YouTube situation. I have everything. God has provided everything without a shadow of a doubt, without even questioning. I have everything that I need. And I'm grateful for it. And I don't know who that's for today. I'm not here to preach to y'all. I'm here to share with you all that when I tell you I have been through a storm. And it's like, what what a month to go through the storm. <laughs> what a month to have my apartment almost set. Like, what, what a month for all of this. What a month for me to have to discover that people have an obsession. What a month. I, like, I'm like, Lord, let me just get through March. Okay, we about to be fitting to go to April. Praise God. Okay. But despite all of the hell, the, the turmoil, the foolishness, the financial issues, I have every single thing. He has not forgotten me. He has not forgotten me. He has not forsaken me. I promise you, and I'm just grateful for it. And so if I could just help one person, and that's why I told my friend, one of my friends said to me this past weekend, actually, they're a very supportive friend, very platonic friend. And they said to me, is this, is this YouTube thing worth it? Is it worth it, Catrice? And for me, they wanted me to say, no, it's not worth it. They wanted me to say that there is no rationale for me to continue to go on. They wanted me to say that I needed to just walk away. And you know what I told them? I said, look, them, just just a joke. I said, look. My goal is to provide some sort of foundation and solution for people that are struggling. To tell a story that nobody wants to be told, wants to tell and to help the underdog. And so as much as you want me to say that this is not worth it, I would 100% do it again. Because people, the messages that I receive offline alone Okay, sometimes y'all need to send a cash app with the with the find with the with the messages to praise the Lord. Let me stop acting like let me stop practicing false humility. Let me just be honest. Sometimes I, I really would love for you all to support the channel uh as much as you all do with viewership financially. You know, one dollar, two dollar. Just please consider start starting to do that. And I need to do a better job with putting that out there. Um, but I would one hundred percent do it again. I said, You want me to say that the people's lives that I touch is not worth it. And I'm sorry, but it is. It's, and listen, this is, I want you all to understand that the Michelle story, albeit we are still fighting, is not my entire channel. And we are 100% we are supporting her and praying for her. But the, the, but, the, but the young girl that was in Texas, who was being R-worded and essayed by her, or one of her cousins or somebody that was a pastor, like, those stories that those are the ones that need to be told. All although they can be heavy, those are the stories that I like to tell to make it to bring an awareness and provide solution. And so I said to them, I said, it is. 
it is it is worth it. I don't know if I'm going to continue to do a lot of things out here. I do have a, a word that I received last week. I, I have to send it to the Wise Council first, and then I will put it in Patreon, and then here on YouTube. But I would I would do this again. I would I would I may not do it to the level at which I was doing it before, you know, but. To impact someone's life, the messages that I get, the people that say like, <clears throat> "I just needed a laugh today. I just needed to see you to see you online and to see you smile and to, you know, I've gotten messages like you're you're my best friend in my head. You're you know all these different things and I just be like, oh my god, that's so that's so cool. You know what I mean? But it, it's those messages that keep me going, and I'm just I'm just in awe of what the Lord allows me to continue to do. So I wanted to share that with you all. Um, it's my personal testimony for today on this Resurrection Sunday. I hope that you all have an amazing day with your family, your friends, lots of food, lots of love. I'm actually headed to brunch right now uh, with a friend of mine. I have to be there at 12 o'clock, so I might post this video later. But I wanted to share that with you all that even though sometimes things may look grim and you might feel forgotten, and I understand that just as much as anybody else. Um, God's mercy and grace is so sufficient. And I'm just I'm just in awe of what he is what he is doing in my life. Although I don't like it all the time. I know that I'm not gonna be in this position forever. And I also know that and even in the midst of me feeling downtrodden, even about finances, that he's going to, he's ordering my steps. And that's why I don't do five-year plans. And people say, what do you see yourself in five years? I don't. I see myself where God sees me. I don't, I never make a plan anymore. Because the last time I made a plan, a five-year plan for myself, he took my father. And I, I, it's just not in me to do anymore. So I love you all. I pray that you all have an amazing day with your family, your friends, and your foe. Even if you're seeing this after Resurrection Sunday, a.k.a. Easter. I love you guys, and I just want and pray God's best for you moving forward. Again, feel free to send donations. Um, I, they would be greatly appreciated and needed at this time. Um, and listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a, a afraid of eBay at this point. <laughs> I love you guys, and I will hopefully see you sometime this week. Um, we do have a few things to cover. Oh, check out my website, cocktailhourwithcatrice.com. Uh, if, if I've not been live, I'm still posting on the website. So make sure that you all visit the website as much as possible so you all can keep up to date on what's going on, even if I'm not live. If even Like if there's a pastor doing some stuff, I'm still posting on the blog. So check out the blog when you all get a chance, and I will see you all soon. Love you.